yeah, randomly just got kicked off the internet, but hopefully we should be back now. Great to see you back. <laughs> Another welcome for everybody. Bex, you'll have to tell me when I'm ready for a three, two, one. Back, thank you, so am I. <laughs> Through all the practices I've had on here, the internet has always been good. Just these small technical hitches. Now, okay, so we're building up some numbers again. Great to have you back. Apologies for that technical glitch, but we are ready to go with our movement snack of the morning. So, welcome everybody. Three, two, one. My name's Kelsey Leverton, although I'll be Sprint All on Facebook. Um, today is Saturday the 9th of May, and this is your 8 a.m. wake up breakfast snack. Welcome to everybody that, you're still, that are still joining. Um, those of you who have been with us for a while now, you should know what's to come. And those of you who are new in, um, just have a look at the movements and see which ones suit you before you take part in them. Remember, all we're aiming to do is promote more movements throughout your day. So extra movement minutes. And we start with our first 10 or possibly 12 minutes any second now. So our first movement is the circulation boosting. So you may be in seated or in standing, wherever you are, have a think about what your posture's up to whilst I just get myself in place. So if you're standing, think about where your feet are. Around hip distance apart is good for your stability and your balance. Have some options of support nearby, maybe a windowsill, a work surface. I've got the wall here, but you might prefer something like a tabletop so that you can put your hand onto, it's up to you. If you're in the chair, have a move forwards towards the front portion of the chair, doing some hip walks. Feet about hip distance apart. If everybody could lengthen up through their trunk, let your shoulders just come back and down, lengthen through the top of your head, and we're ready to move. We've set you up, now we can set you off. So we're gonna start with either some heel pumps, just lifting those heels, get a bit of movement through your feet, or you can go straight into a leg march. So you can do either of these first leg movements in seated or in the standing position. Right, keep going with that. We're gonna get on for about a minute of this just to get our circulation boosted, as the title of the movement suggests, and start loosening up some joints, getting the blood flowing a bit more around our bodies just to prepare us for the movements that are coming up. So have a pause there with the legs. If you want to bring an arm movement in, just an arm swing coming from your shoulder joint. Both arms if you feel steady and able in standing. Both arms if you like in seated or alternatively you can bring it a little bit of a, a row in with those arms, reaching and pulling. All right, have a pause there, everyone. Think about your posture just to reset it. And we're going to put those together now. So leg marches to begin with or heel pedals. Apologies if you can hear my clicky ankles. They really are terrible. And bring the arms into the mix if you feel steady on your feet and able to move arms and legs together. Or just pick one of the options that we've already said and we should be about there now. Have a pause. Okay, so what we're heading to do now is do our top trio of movements. Starting with the shoulders. So Bex doesn't normally do lifts. She gives them you as an option, but we're gonna do a few lifts today all the way up towards your ears. See if you can get both of your shoulders moving in exactly the same, to exactly the same height, lifting and pressing. Now you can choose to do three, four or five of these, whatever suits you, seated or standing. 
have a pause there. So that should have just prepared your shoulders a little bit, moving into the shoulder rolls, shoulder circles. So have a go at up, round, back and down. Nice steady motion, a smooth motion, ignoring any clicks or clunks, because we are a little bit crumpled in the morning, aren't we, sometimes? So these movements should help to iron you out a fraction and get a bit more movement through the shoulders. Good for any reaching. When you're getting dressed, that's if you're still in your pajamas. And when you're moving around doing gardening, because everybody seems to be gardening at the minute. All right, that should about do you with three, four, five of those repetitions. Heading into head turns now. So I'm just going to come down here. And what we're aiming to do is keep the shoulders square to the front as we sit in our good posture and just have a look to one side, come back to the center, take a small pause and then head off in the other direction. One side may feel a little bit looser or a little bit stiffer than the other. Try not to work into any discomfort or pain. Just go to whatever position feels good for you. And those of you who are on your feet, again, that pace suits our head turns. So it's very deliberate, trying to move a little bit further into the movement as we try each repetition. And also that pause in the middle serves to give us a little bit of a chance um, to maintain our balance and stability. Sometimes turning our head can make you feel a little bit wobbly sometimes. Okay, have a pause there, job done. Moving on to my favorite exercise. It's not great though for a side profile. Um, it's the double chin exercise, so the chin tucks. Placing your fingers, whether you're seated or in standing, it's exactly the same. Placing your fingers on your chin, using your fingers as a guide, or using your fingertips as a marker. So your chin comes away and back to that marker. Have a go at up to three, four or five of those. And what you're aiming to do is really lengthen out your neck so that we can sit your head better with a combination of all of these head and shoulder movements. Sit your head posturally better on top of your shoulders. So that should do you with that top trio there. We're going to move on to our trio of trunk. Um, so we've got three movements here, all focusing on loosening up your spine and moving through your midriff. So starting off with, I'm going to start with side bends. If you're in standing, take your feet a tad wider and then bend into those knees just a fraction. This is to help us to keep our lower half still whilst our top half moves. So hands loosely down by your side and fingertips just along the seam of your trousers. We're trying to tilt over and come back to the centre. Pause a second and then head off in the other direction. Let me just do a couple here for you. So over with your fingertips sliding down the seam of your trousers. That helps us to keep our top half in line with our bottom half. So we're avoiding leaning forwards or backwards. And here in the chair, if you've got arms around you, you may need to adjust your arms around the arms of the chair. A lot of arms there. Alternatively, just keep your arms loose by your side and importantly keeping your sit bones, your bum bones glued to the chair so that one side isn't lifting as you tilt over, if that makes sense. So again, few of these up to around five. A six one won't be any, uh, won't hurt <laughs> uh, if you've not managed to remember to count. Like me, I'm rubbish at counting them. And have a pause there. 
All right, so I think we'll just have a smidge of circulation boosting. So when you're ready, if you want to just bring arms and legs in together, then that's absolutely fine. This is seated or standing. Remember, if you need to hold on to something, then make sure that you've got something close by that you can just rest either one hand or both hands onto. Just as you move in here, have a think about your ankles and your feet and your toes. It's not the floorboards in my house, it's my ankles, feet and toes that are clicking and creaking. All right, have a pause. Trunk twists this time, a great activity to loosen up our twisting motion when we use, when we're getting out of bed, so you've done some of this already, or always, somebody's put the toilet paper a bit further round, so you might have to do a twist and a reach to retrieve it. Good skill to have. So here we are with our hands folded across our body, if you like, and beginning to twist. There's your chair option. In standing, it's just slightly different with our feet a tad wider than hip distance, with our knees slightly bent and moving through the twist, being really mindful to keep your hips facing forwards. Try not to stretch too far round and reach too far round. We need to try and maintain the hips forwards, so your bottom half sealed in concrete, just allowing the top half to move. If you've got the curtain shut, you could put your arms up like this or like this. Sorry, just a really rubbish joke from me. Got to get them in though. So three, four or five of those should be just fine. Our final movement then in our trio of trunk is a back extension. So great movement, especially as if we're sitting, we may be hunched over. If we're walking with any walking aids, then we may have the tendency to come over. And if we're gardening or moving around in the kitchen, again, we do a lot of leaning forwards, ro rolling our shoulders forwards as we do our activities of daily living. This counteracts all of those positions. Hands can be on the side of your hips, in standing or in seated. Have a look at the movement. It's like somebody's got you by the scruff here and they're lifting you up and you're just taking a small lean backwards. Just a tiny one to begin with. Again, feeling as if you're being lifted here. Look ahead and a small arch into the lower back. In standing, you might want your feet just that little bit wider you might want the wall just a little bit closer to you, just in case you have a little bit of an overbalance. But if we keep our chin down and our eyes looking forwards and just start small, we can always progress it as we go through those repetitions. Super. Have a pause there. Take a rest. Our final movement then, ankles. Really important joint. Um, we need our ankles, of course, to help us with any walking and any balancing over different surfaces, whether it be grass, dodgy pavements or um, carpeted areas or areas with rugs in your house. So just before we get moving with that, there's quite a few different options here. So have a quick look before you take up your option. So we can be in our full rested position at the back of the chair. Leg lifted, pointing and pulling back with the toes. If this isn't an option for you and you need to remain in the chair, we'll have a few hip walks. Trying to bring your feet through with the movements. If you're in standing or in seated, holding on to your support, we don't want this to be a balance challenge with your standing leg just nearest the support and this with this one. We can put our toes down and our heel dig. So we're pointing through the toes and then pulling back the toes. I'll show you on this side. Trying to get the biggest and best movement out of those ankle joints. 
standing strong through our standing leg. If you've done one side and you're ready to change sides, take a turn around so that you can still have your standing leg near to the support. Have a think about posture, try and improve posture as you stand and do this exercise. And take a pause there, you must have done enough on each side now. If you haven't, what have you been doing? Watching my demos? Great stuff everybody, it's been really good to uh, deliver these movements to you this morning. Um, I hope you've enjoyed them. Now, if you haven't got dressed, you can go and get dressed and use all those joints and movements, um, hopefully moving you through that task with a bit more ease. We're all done for now. So thank you for joining us. Um, it's been great to be here and I'll see you all tomorrow morning at your 8am snack again. And Bex will be back with you at the noontime snack. Take care, everybody. See you tomorrow morning. <laughs>